Good morning, y'all. Welcome back to Harmon Homestead. I'm out here at the chicken coops today, and our last video on chicken genetics, Olive Eggers had such a wonderful response. I wanted to talk to you about silky chickens and their genetics, okay? So if you're a first-time owner or you're contemplating getting silkies, this video is going to be for you. We have had silky chickens three and a half years, and it's been a steep learning curve, but I think these tips and tricks will help you. So first of all, if you're looking into getting silkies, I would get them from a local breeder who has been doing this a while, because the reason I say that, if you get these at a big box store, if they're selling silkies, a lot of times they will not look desirable for the breed. Silkies are purebred and they are very, very finicky as far as their characteristics and you need to get these from somebody that knows what they're doing, okay? So let's talk about what you need to look for. This right here is a hen. She's probably four months old, four to five months old. Silkies, of course, are called silky because they're fluffy. These are fluffy chickens, which is great for kids. Us girls love these great pets. They just look fluffy and furry. Their feathers are different than a hard feathered bird. Next, you want a crest up here, a huge crest. The bigger, the better, okay? It's more desirable the bigger it is. Every silky chicken has this, I call it a top knot. It's a crest, just like a Polish chicken has these. Next, their comb right here must be a walnut. This right here is called a walnut comb. The roosters will have a huge, huge, literally walnut comb. It's the size of, of, of a hickory nut, huge. Now, silkies, their combs need to be black or either mulberry, deep colored. This is the main thing I see from store-bought chickens. They'll have a comb the color of my shirt or this shirt right here, that bright red, like a Rhode Island red. That's not what you want as far as breeding these because if it is a purebred silky, everything about this chicken, as far as its skin, its limbs, everything is black. Even the meat of this chicken is black. We do not use these for meat birds. <laughs> these are ornamental and to help us with eggs in the winter. But guys, every single piece of this chicken is black. And that's why the comb needs to be very, very dark. Even the beak, see her beak here? It's black. Now see her little eyes up under there? Isn't she cute? She is so cute. Now on this one, she's bearded. See that? That's her beard. They can have a beard or they can be without a beard. Either one. Either one's fine with these. I like the beards, but that's just a personal preference. Next, they must have turquoise, bright blue earlobes. If you can see here, I'm gonna try. Look, mama, look, show them your ear. Do you see that? They must have that vibrant blue color. It's the most beautiful blue you've ever seen. They must have that. Now, a lot of people will tell you the earlobes determine the color of eggs. For a lot of chickens, it does, but silkies will not lay anything but a smaller size cream egg. Their ears are just blue it, it, with a purplish tint. They must have that. Next, their feet. They have feathered feet, which is a disadvantage because they are so small. A lot of times they will traipse through the mud and the muck. Stuff will get stuck on their feet. But if you notice here, it's okay, mama. They have five toes. One, two, three, four, five. They got that little extra one right there. That is what you want to see with silky chickens. That toe must be there. Their feet are, again, prone to be um, in not the best condition because of what they walk through, what they get put in. It's just it's something about their feet. And their little legs are so small that they can be up to their chest in mud where another another type of chicken would not be so what makes these desirable guys they're hard to find that's the first thing if you find a good line of chickens second of all a lot of people will show these in bantam shows silkies are known for winning those they're beautiful it's it's like an ornamental dog or cat like a siamese cat a pomeranian it's something it's not a, a functioning working animal per se, but it's beautiful and people love it. Second of all, our silkies lay in the wintertime when a lot of our chickens will not. 
They are so thick and fluffy and furry that they do well in the colder temps here in Alabama. Usually if I have chicks that I've hatched of silkies anywhere from January to February, they'll start laying the next January. So you will have a delay. They wait till the temps get cool. It's just something about it. These chickens, people want. People want these chickens. Some do, some don't. But kids, us girls, people want them. And the good thing is, if you hatch your own chickens or you breed your own chickens, guys, these will bring you more money because they're more desirable. It's, it's harder to raise these because they're so fragile and they're purebred. And they're prone to having a lot of medical problems or genetic abnormalities and people will pay more. So if you sell hatching eggs, if you sell day old chicks, if you sell hens, and believe it or not, you can, if you're trying to sell these, roosters will sell of these because they're so rare. Now, another good thing about these, we have two coaching bantams, so we've had more than that. Guys, the eggs off these silky hens, they're not huge. They're smaller cream eggs, but the coaching bantam eggs <laughs> are half the size of these silky eggs. They are nothing compared to this. And again, they keep you good in the winter time. They also consume less feed because they're so small. That's a good thing. Also, they will free range. I've got my biggest pen out right now. They're all around this hillside. They do fine and they put themselves up at night. I was worried to death that all of these free ranging together would be a problem. My bigger chickens don't mess with two things here on this homestead, my silkies and my Muscovy ducks. I don't know why. I figured that would be the biggest uh, chaotic thing I've ever seen, but they haven't even touched these. So that's a good thing. But guys, it's, it's gonna be a money maker. If you are, or if you're a breeder, a hatcher, this is what you want. Now, let me tell you about that though, hatching these eggs. Silky eggs, I've, I hatched her. I've hatched all these I have here, except my original group that we got from a breeder. The chicks are small because they're bantam. So when they hatch, they're gonna be half the size of a regular chick and they kind of have trouble hatching. It's hard to get these to hatch. A lot of times they'll do fine, but a lot of times they won't. So expect that. But when they're a day old, these go for triple to quadruple the price of a standard chick. If a Rhode Island red chick is $3, these go anywhere from eight to $15, even more than that each at a day old. So you're looking at a good bit of profit there if you're wanting that. But the main thing is, is with these chickens, guys, they're just, they're ornamental, they're beautiful. They don't take much feed, they're pets. They're just, they're great chickens. And again, if I only had to get one type of Bantam, it would be Silkies. Everybody loves them and they're so unique they're so different so guys if you are going to hatch your own chicks also beware of this we have all purebred silkies here these genetic abnormalities again you can have problems one of my chicks that i hatched last january and the reason i do is because they lay so heavily in january here and they'll keep you stocked with eggs one of the chicks had only four toes on one foot even though parents were pure, had five toes on each foot, the whole nine yards, sometimes a, a mistake just happens. That can happen. So if you're doing this, don't think that everything will come out perfect. You have to check your chicks and make sure that the, all the desirable genes pass through. But guys, as a show chicken, these are the way to go. Yep, yep. Because you're so pretty. You're so pretty. Last but not least, predators. This is a downfall about silky chickens. They're small and you can see, she can't see. She's way up under there between the muffs, the beard and the top knot, the crest. There's her eye, but otherwise you can't, she can't see that well. So that makes them more prone to chicken hawks. If you're free ranging, any kind of anything, it makes them more prone to injury. The predators love these chickens. I don't know why every pen we've had them in, that's where the predators go to. You have to make sure you have a fortress set up for these because it, with us, it seems like possums, raccoons are drawn to these chickens and they're small. They can't really get away. Someone said that they can't fly. We see them bounce around the yard all the time. They'll kind of hop from place to place. No, they're not the world's best flyers, but they can, they can move pretty quick, especially for them. So overall, I definitely will keep silkies. They've been an investment for us and 
it's, it's great to have here. And I always tell you, get something unique if you're starting out with chickens or you're wanting to breed or hatch, you want something everybody else doesn't have and you want a good line and people to know like, hey, yeah, you're pretty. Last but not least about silkies. I forgot to say this while I was holding my beautiful little hen down there. Guys, they go broody. So if you don't want to buy an incubator, these chickens will sit on anybody's eggs and hatch them. That's great if you don't want to incubate. It's a downfall if you want them up laying every day because these chickens are notorious for sitting on a clutch of eggs and trying to hatch them. So if you want that, that's great. If you don't want that, you might not want to get silkies. They want to know, hey, you're pretty. And they're just pets, guys. They're just sweet pets. All right. Hope that answers some of your silky questions. We'll see you next time on Harmon Homestead.